River Lee in Forest Green, and he's born in Franklin, New Brunswick, where he proudly resides with his family. It was in November of 2005 that Brian, Brian opened the TD Wealth Private Investment Office in Frederick, and his branch was named the runner up in the TD Branch team in 2006. Since 2006, Brian has raised well over $1 million for charities and organizations throughout his fundraising that directly touch all aspects of life, including children, the environment, autism, homelessness, and local food banks. The beneficiaries of his fundraising initiatives include South Devon School, the City of Fredericton, Beaverbrook Art Gallery, Science East, uh, CNIB, Fredericton Boys and Girls Club, Royal Warwick Elementary School, the Gia, Gia Project, and the University of New Brunswick. In 2018, he and his close friend Stephen Burns walked from Edmonton to Fredericton and raised $132,000 for Liberty Lane. And he's, Brian is one of the first New Brunswickers to make his way to the North Pole. Matching his fundraising initiatives with high adrenaline adventures, he's also walked the Atacama Desert, the Sahara Desert, the Gobi Desert, and has climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, all costs self-funded. And this December, Brian added a new adventure to his resume when he took on the South Pole. After six months of training and mental preparedness, he was dropped off at the bottom of the earth for two weeks of skiing in Antarctica to the South Pole and topped his trek by climbing Mount Vinson, part of the seven summits which are comprised of the highest mountains on each of the seven continents of the earth. And Brian handpicked the Chalmers Hospital Foundation as the beneficiary of this adventure, and because of the new, because of the numerous mental challenges he faced during this trek, the Chalmers Foundation and Brian to say that all proceeds and donations from this trek will be directed invested in the local mental health initiatives to support the Brunswickers of all backgrounds. This fundraising initiative is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to help and contribute financially to mental health initiatives in Western and Central New Brunswick. So Brian, we are honored to have you here tonight, and to give us a few snippets about your trek, perhaps, and, the, and your passion for the cause, and maybe talk about what the next steps are in this journey for you. So, ladies and gentlemen, Brian Jones. Well, uh, that was a long introduction. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't. I didn't really have any prepared statements. I just maybe would kind of give you a tell you a little bit about the trip itself. Uh, and a lot of people ask me about if you go know, someplace that's cold in here in February. So, uh, and when I got off, actually got off the uh, plane in Antarctica, which is again quite a trip to get there, I had a full on flu. Uh, you get off the plane, it's minus 45, and your next destination is a tent. So, uh, how this kind of relates to uh, mental illness and problems with uh, wellness with your mind, uh, this track actually encompassed a lot of that because the first uh, two days of the expedition, uh, it was minus 45, minus 50 every day. You're walking in a wind, you're kind of going up a hill, you're pulling a 100 pound sled. And of course, you have the flu. And the, uh, I don't know if you've got some pictures up there, but uh, the first 10 days, it's basically snow and ice as far as you can see, and that's all you can see. And you know, you try and play your music for, for you know, to alleviate the coldness, but that freezes within 10 minutes. So that's no fun. So uh, you do this day after day after day, going about one and a half hour because you have to go fast enough not to freeze or slow enough or slow enough not to sweat but fast enough not to freeze. Unfortunately in day two I had uh, hypothermia because I had the flu. So it doesn't matter how slow you go you sweat. So we overcame that but uh, ten days of doing that uh, was sort of the first part of the mini series for me. Uh, day then we climbed the mountain which was basically one step breathe, one step breathe again for four days in a row. So you get to the summit, which is minus 60, and you're running around, why did I do that to get up here and enjoy this? And then when we came down, we had a snowstorm, and again, snowstorms at, at, at Mount Vincent are uh, minus 60, 50 mile an hour winds. And you do that in a white air condition for three or four hours. It, uh, it definitely catches you mentally. And then when you think you get through all that, you're done, you spend five days in the tent because you're snowed in. So, uh, and when you're in a tent in Antarctica, it's not like you go and walk around because there's crevasses and avalanche. So, uh, for me, it was a it was a really huge test mentally and physically. Uh, but, you know, how is that all tied into what we're talking about? And my initial uh, game plan when I did this was, uh, we all remember the shooting here in Fredericton, and my best friend Steve and his wife had died. So, uh, I believe personally that there's probably I, don't, I can't remember the shooter's name, but I'm sure there's 100 people like him in the city. And I think it's important that we reach out to these people and actually get in front of them 
before these things happen. Uh, you know, it's quite costly to the city. You know, when these things happen, it's also quite costly to these families. Um, kid suicides in the city are all time highs. Um, waiting list, if you want to kill yourself, there's probably a three or four month waiting list right now. So uh, it's probably not a good thing. Uh, especially with kids, uh, you know, they're very impulsive and if they want something to do something, they're more likely to do it quickly. So they should have access to the care quite very quickly. UNB is another example. Uh, their capacity or over capacity. You know, there's students there that they don't quite understand because when I was at UNB it was a, it's a pretty good time, but now it seems like there's a lot of anxiety and depression with kids. So uh, uh, it's important that we get that homelessness. I mean sure you guys talk about that all the time here. Uh, the drug problems I would say is out of control. Uh, and again, it's hard for me to relate to because when I was young it was you know, it was beer and pot. Now it's uh, fentanyl, meth, crack, uh, a lot of bad things. A lot of times when we talk about mental illness as well, we think it's these people, but it's also the first responders who have to deal with this. You know, I've talked to a number of police officers, paramedics, firemen who actually go to these calls. And it's amazing that they do it night in and night out on the weekends. And some of the stuff we see is pretty uh, unbelievable. Um, Stress levels of teachers, parents. Uh, I've gotten when I was away probably 50 messages from people who, and a lot of them were from parents who were struggling with how am I going to find help for my kid. One girl talked about she cut herself. She, you know, how do I stop doing this? So it's like sort of beyond me, but I refer to the long term uh, Violence and criminal activities obviously increasing. Marriage breakdowns, financial problems are out of control. So all these issues are directly related to mental illness. Um, and I kind of like it that global warming, we all know what's happening. We all see it all going on around us. We all know family members or friends or walking on the street and go, oh, that's not right. Um, they don't know what the answer is or how we fix it. Um, you know, there's another uh, a lady here, I can't remember which organization, when they opened up a, a clinic here on Friday afternoon for you go around, find it down the street. So, I mean, I think, you know, we need to talk about it more. Council, maybe, I know there's a sort of committee, standing committee, but maybe there's more work with Horizons that we can actually address this and, and maybe make it better. Uh, the purpose of this track was to uh, raise money for uh, some plots in the emergency ward, because where there's a lot of people going to the emergency ward that have you know, really a lot of control. So when that happens, you know, you're sick people in the emergency ward, the doctors have to come out, the nurses have to come out. I believe it's a, it's a section 10, where the, the police officer actually has to stay there with that person. That means another officer's off the street. And you know, if you get two or three of them, then you get two or three officers in the emergency ward staying with these people. So uh, the game plan there is to actually create three or four pods where you can put these people in there and have have them have a safe place. Uh, some of these kids that are going in there uh, are there for 12 to 18 hours because they're, they want to kill themselves. And they don't look sick and they don't look hurt, but you know they're not there coughing, they're not the old person who's got the broken leg. So they're the last people to get seen. So a lot of times what happens is they just go and jump off the bridge. So we need to have a place for those people to go. I know it's just a mandate um, as well. Maybe we have a uh, Clinic downtown is maybe free and open 24 7. But I mean, that's me dreaming. And again, these are all band aids, but I'm sure uh, with a committee here working with the uh, professional, we can come up with some better solutions and give people places to go. So uh, I'd like to thank you all for your time and uh, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Brian, and uh, appreciate uh, what you do for our community. And, and uh, this, is a, this is an important issue. And that's why I asked you to come tonight, just not because of. Uh, you know, the uh, kind of superhuman feat you did, but it's, uh, it's the cause. And it's important to the city of Fredericton uh, where we, we care deeply about the mental health of our employees. And uh, mental health in our community directly impacts how the city, you know, the operations of the city. So, um, 
good luck. I know we have uh, another fundraiser to, to coming up in uh, March 22nd. Just March 26th, Thursday at the Delta. At the Delta. So I encourage people to participate in that. And on behalf of City Council, I have just have a certificate of appreciation to give you, to thank you, and, uh, and uh, keep up the great work that you've worked. Thank you. 